Hi everyone. A few weeks ago, we have posted a video on clamp, cut and ligate, these three steps. After that, we have got a lot of requests to tell you about the transfixation sutures, about the knots and how to ligate the pedicles. So today what we are going to do, we are going to discuss only about the ligation part uh, and we'll talk something about the knots also and about simple suturing also. But most of the times we are going to focus on the ligate part of clamp, cut and ligate of a pedicle which we have to do most of the time in gynecological surgery and also in urogynecological surgeries. So I have with me Dr. Deepa today and uh, she will be showing you different things and we can discuss then how to do these steps. Okay. So Deepa, um, first thing I want to do, uh, suppose, see first concept, I want everyone to understand that uh, this is the uterus and whenever we say that we have different pedicles, mm -hmm. okay. So we are saying infundibulo pelvic ligament, we are saying uterosacral ligament or round ligament. You have to understand one thing very clearly that these are not separate structures, you will not get different separate top to bottom identifiable band kind of thing. There will be some elevation and why is it so? Why we do not get everything in continuity? Because usually it is covered by peritoneum. So these structures are not separately delineated when we open up the abdomen. Yes. So what happens if you have to understand the peritoneum? It's like a big um, cover or a bed sheet, a huge bed sheet. And this bed sheet is covering all these structures. So if you have to nicely understand, you imagine that from the inside of the abdominal wall, Deepa, mm -hmm. this uh, peritoneum is covering the inside of the abdominal wall. Mm -hmm. Then it gets reflected onto the dome of the bladder. Mm -hmm. Then it makes the loose fold of peritoneum. And then it covers the uterus, mm -hmm. goes to the fundus of the uterus, goes behind it, goes to the pouch of Douglas, and then just makes the retroperitoneum. Okay. So the same peritoneum on the sides covers all the structures which are attached to the uterus okay and so we call this broad ligament yeah. so actually everything like tubes also you are going to see the top of everything but all these structures are basically covered with two layers of peritone so it is not very easy to separately see as we show you in books it is not like that everything you will be able to identify the things but the lower edge will not be seen because it is covered with that sheet of peritoneum okay so that makes it little um, to understand sometimes difficult when you are the beginner but we'll try to tell you as much as possible simplify it today okay so um, can you tell Deepa in any hysterectomy okay how many pedicles we have to clamp cut and ligate um, so we begin with the round ligament, then we go to... So the we teach always um, corneal structures. When we start abdominal hysterectomy, these are corneal structures. What are the corneal structures? The fallopian tube, the ovarian ligament and the round ligament. Round ligament, okay. After that second pedicle is uterine vessels. Uterine vessels is the second pedicle. Suppose we are talking of simple things. We are just removing the uterus. uterus. And yes. third pedicle is... Uterosacral. Uterosacral and, and the complex. So there are only three clamps and three pedicles. Cornwall structures, one pedicle. Uterine artery, second pedicle. Meckenroth's uterosacral ligament complex, third Sorry. pedicle. Now, when you are taking out this uterus from down, from the vagina, now there are again three pedicles. Yes, but we go in reverse. reverse. So we begin with the meckenroth's and uterosacrals and then we go up to the uterine arteries. And then and third is cornwall structures. structures. So it's simple. Three steps, whether you go from up to down, or you come from down to up in vaginal hysterectomy okay now suppose Deepa let's see that see suppose now we will just tell the technique of a ligation when we are telling suppose this is some ligament which is covered with peritoneum okay now how do you clamp you clamp suppose you have doubly clamped the structure and I told you seeing the tip is important so put another clamp Deepa behind this Very good. So you saw what Deepa did is a very nice technique. So when you are putting this clamp, you can first clamp you can put from either of the hands, like this side or that side. You, your hand can be on either of the side. But when you are putting the second clamp, you should not hold it like this because 
unnecessary the gap will be more here okay when you are putting the clamp behind it your hand should always come from this side okay so you have put the another clamp now you cut and show how you will cut it you want to hold this pedicle yeah. in your hand so we hold it like this uh -huh. and we do not cut it very close to the clamp very we need to leave, leave a little bit of the tissue before it so that we can transfix or ligate that portion so we begin cutting maybe a few millimeters before the uh, clamp and do not cut it straight forth we cut it little by little in crisscross patterns and we continue doing this until we reach the tip of the clamp so i call it um, flowering of uh, pedicle how we make it so we do it in bits and parts so that if you have cut it, cut it straight in one line there is chance that it might slip from this pedicle but if you have made it little bit here little bit there it becomes like different an arrangement of flowers and then it is difficult for uh, the clamps to slip from a pedicle which is not very smooth or which is irregular okay so now when you cut it deep after that you have to always make a pedicle yeah okay hold it yeah. so you have cut till here till the tip and after tip you have to change the direction till now you were cutting like this you have to change the direction and then you have to cut it like this okay little pedicle and what is the purpose of the how do you check that your pedicle is correct you have to see whether your clamps are able to move properly or not because otherwise if you do not make this pedicle what will happen all your pedicles when you are just cutting they will be clustered together and when you have to check for hemostasis or for individual pedicle you will not be able to check them okay. so considering this as the tissue this is a clamp and cut pedicle you can see how the redundant tissue is here immediate to the clamp and how we have made a u sort of turn to make this a complete pedicle so that we can go beneath this and take the suture next so we call it l shaped you go straight just turn 90 degrees that becomes an l okay now when you have to tie this now for tying i will tell you only two kind of ties are there one is called the free tie and the other is called the transfixation tie okay so when we are taking the free tie free tie means what if um, something is there suppose um, suppose this tube is there it looks like if you are taking a free tie so this is the suture material let me tell you this is the suture material we use vicryl number one for most of the pedicles okay whether it is a free tie or or transfixation tie we use this kind of delayed absorbable suture which is vicryl number one for 99.9% .9 of our surgeries okay now what happens that this is the needle you take when you have to when you have to take free tie deepa what do we do we take so the free, free end, end and yeah. hold it with one artery or okay artery we don't have we'll use needle holder only okay you hold it and suppose you have to free tie this what you will do now this is the pedicle so when we want to give a free tie we first take the tip beyond the clamp beyond the tip of the clamp hold it with an instrument at the tip and we come around the pedicle we turn the instruments to that side so that this area the lateral area the area where we are going to place the knot is well exposed and then we take the ties here so once we take the ties, we need to ensure that the knot is crossed and then we can go ahead with tightening the pedicle so as we tighten the pedicle the clamps will be released the first clamp to be released will be the lateral one so as the clamp slips out we need to tighten the suture and then goes away the medial clamp so if you are planning to transfix you have to just recatch this will be recatching this and if suppose your plan is just to put a free tie then you can even remove this clamp how to do the free tie suppose this is a pedicle okay so hold your suture material from the tip with a needle holder or an artery forceps and take it all around it okay suppose this is the clamp you have to take it around and then what you have to do is in the finger so usually what i do 
from the behind back of my finger i just take it in front and then cross with the small suture material i just put a cross here and then two times you have to take this free end inside the circle okay and then see the direction of your knot so this knot is not it's a properly placed knot if the hands are like this it becomes a wrong knot okay so see the proper placement of the knot and then for time take fingers index finger or one side index finger and one side thumb to this knot and start tying it slowly and tighten it okay then after that similarly when it is enough tight actually you are supposed to keep the tension for say five seconds here so that the knot gets a memory which is very important okay usually more important when we are using sutures like proline which are non-braided suture but even it is a good practice to give it a, a memory to this knot also then what i always tell is that the important thing is keep once either this suture which is a free end or a short end of the suture material or the long one suture one side of the suture should always and always be in tension whenever you are you cannot afford to leave both the suture ends in one go okay at a at one point of time you cannot just leave both of them one suture so that your this knot or that tie what you have taken doesn't become loose then do it again wrap this longer end of the suture material from the back of your finger and the short end of the suture bring it in front take your instrument take it once inside and then tighten it okay this is how we usually put the knots and for uh, the, uh, for the free for this vitral suture material two to three knots are more than enough one of my teachers when i was doing my pg used to tell that third knot is a stress knot means only those surgeons who are having stress put the third knot usually for vitral two knots are more than enough <laughs> so as i told you that for a pedicle there are only two kinds of ties we need one is called the free tie which we have already shown you the other is called transfixation suture now what is a transfixation suture transfixation suture means trans means opposite so you have to take one bite from one end and the other bite for other end now deepa you imagine suppose um, suppose this is a tissue okay hold it and you imagine that i'm just putting a free tie across it i'm not taking any bite with the help of needle so what will happen if by chance the suture gets pulled it is very easy for the pedicle to slip so that is the drawback of a free tie transfixation what do we do we take little bit of peritoneum or tissue from one side and little bit peritoneum of the other side so that imagine that even if there is some kind of traction to either the suture or the pedicle it is very difficult or com comparatively more difficult than a free tie to slip away you understood so free tie it is easy to put and you are not pricking any structure in that you don't need a needle do you don't need a needle holder for that but the chances if there is some traction either on the suture material or in your pedicle it is very easy like a rubber band it will come out okay while when you have transfix transfix means again fixing at opposite ends if you have put your needle and fix little bit tissue on both the ends it is very difficult when either you are pulling the suture material nobody pulls the suture material but maybe while checking the pedicles you are seeing it or there is some traction on the pedicle it is very very difficult to slip from a transfixation suture okay so how do we do a transfixation suture so deepa will show it again so she will clamp this tissue suppose this is a tissue so doubly clamp it again like okay let us say this is the tissue mm. so we take a clamp and place it here like this very good uh -huh. and I'll hold it for you yeah. we usually double clamp so uh -huh. we take another clamp and place it laterally uh -huh. so we go close to the clamp here uh -huh. and clamp it and clamp. okay 
Now for transfixation, then we will cut it. But for this showing this technique, we are just holding it here so that I can hold it correctly. Now if you have to take transfixation suture, so show Deepa how you take transfixation suture. Uh, we place the needle holder at the junction of the medial two third and the lateral one third of the needle and we hold it, we place it at the tip of the needle holder. And the important thing is then you put three locks there are in needle holder or any instrument. There are usually three locks there behind. So when you are holding the tissues with Alice forceps, artery forceps, you have to just lock it, which you are going to preserve. Then you have to just put one lock. When you are using the instruments, we are using the needle holder to hold the needle. Then you have to put it three locks. And usually we should be able to hear a sound. What sound? Can you do it again? Yes, these clicks, three clicks are very important. You should always do that. Otherwise, your needle will bend here and there. Okay. So first, we take a bite at the tip, just above the tip of the instrument. We again fix the needle to the needle holder. And the second bite is lateral to the clamps at the junction of two third and one third. Yes. So we again take another bite. Mm -hmm. Then where should the loop come? It comes in between. So I think we'll do it like this. So I'll hold this end for you. There will be one artery which usually we put to mount the end so that it doesn't slip away when we are pulling it. So important thing, now two, three important things I will tell you. Whenever you have to do the cutting part, we do in front of the clamp. Whenever we have to do the tying part, we do on the back of the clamp. Okay. So we have taken the bites from the back side, near the back side of the clamp. Never we are going to take the bites from here. First bite also there, second bite. So when Deepa took the first bite, she fixed one end at the tip. The second bite when she took, she took the upper one third, junction of lower two third and upper one third and she took a bite. So actually both the ends, we have fixed it. Now how do we tie a knot? So in a similar fashion, we hook this thread behind our index finger on the left side. We hold the other end at the free end and we put it above our index finger. Then we go underneath with the instrument, take the tip once and again go underneath, take the tip out twice and we ensure whether the knot is squared or not. So this is properly squared. So it is not entangled or it, is not, it does not look confusing. This is properly squared and then we tighten it while we put our index fingers on the knot. So when if I release the clamp now, this clamp, the pedicle gets tightened right. itself. And then we give it a memory. You can count till four or five and give this memory. Then without leaving the traction on one of the ends, take one more knot. This will not get, I'll release and recatch it. Okay. So the traction is still there on the knot. And again, I rotate the shorter end above my finger and go beneath with the instrument and place the second knot. And we do this again for the third knot. That's it. Okay. So even two or three knots, actually two knots for Vikram are said to be enough. But usually we tend to put three knots. If you are two, even if you put four or five knots, nothing wrong is going to happen. But at least two knots. First knot is a double knot. Second knot onwards is a single knot. So like this, so two knots in first go and one throw in second go. That is what is mandatory to be put in a viper suture. Then we just cut this. Now we cut the tissue that is medial to this. So we leave some tissue in front of the instrument 
and we cut it a little half a zedli the flowering that was described earlier then we change the direction of the scissor so that we cut it here in a l shaped fashion to create a pedicle so now a pedicle is created here now we suture it so the first bite so we can suture either from posterior to anterior or from anterior to posterior so here i'll do it from posterior to anterior we take a bite at the tip of the clamp from posterior to anterior you can do it even anterior to posterior but whatever you are doing once you have to do the same thing again now like deepa has come from posterior to anterior again she has to come from posterior to anterior so this second bite has to be taken at the junction of the 2/3 and the 1/3 of the clamp pedicle in this way this loop loop of thread which we are forming now by do, taking the suture should come in between two metal size say always at in between the clamp and the needle ha this is correct it should not go low it should not go behind it okay okay so now, now we have taken the bites we will mm -hmm. secure the knot mm -hmm. so again we hold the long thread over our index finger and we place the short end above it we go in between with the instrument take the tip out once and do the same thing again twice make sure that our knot is well squared like this and place it while guiding the knot with the index fingers and while this is done the clamps need to be released and the knot tightened simultaneously second clamp can also be released or reheld and then released without leaving the traction on the suture material a second knot in a similar fashion has to be placed and a third knot then we cut the suture perfect so i hope you understood the types of uh, ligation that is free tie and transfixation suture and how to tie a knot so um, other things the same principles of knot will be applied when you are putting a continuous suture or a mattress suture or anything so i hope you understood the point anything you want to ask should we show them how a free knot is done the one that is done without any with hands without yes. any instruments if you ask me i feel in gynecology or in urogynecology also one knot to learn one good knot is more than enough we don't have to uh, in open surgery especially i'm talking about just learn one good knot that uh, proper knotting is more than enough usually when we are showing you the hand knots or uh, where we do not as you said where we do not use the instrument i feel whenever we show you that it is more of a show off and then because the knot with instruments does exactly the same purpose and the disadvantage of the uh, without any instruments when we do hand knotting it wastes more suture material as compared to the other one so if you have to show off to somebody to your juniors or to new people you can always do that it looks very beautiful how you are using your hands but i don't think it is the requirement at any point of the search okay i hope it answers your question and if you go into literature if you watch different videos there are 100 kinds of knotting techniques there is there are 100 named knots but i feel you should first learn one technique and master that technique and on top of that whatever you learn once your basics are good that is always an advantage so first at least learn the basic or one technique and made it so strong that you can use it anywhere and everywhere so thank you so much thank you for watching